For nearly 14 centuries, Muslims have been slaughtering their fellow Muslims. The latest example of Muslim-on-Muslim -Muslim terror came early yesterday morning in Nigeria. CNN reports, At least 50 people were killed on Tuesday in a suicide bomb attack at a mosque in northern Nigeria on the border with Cameroon, police told CNN. The attack happened in the town of Mubi in Adamawa State, as worshippers were gathering for the Fajr dawn prayer at around 5.20 a.m. local time, said Othman Abubakar, a police spokesman. The bomber was about 17 years old, Abubakar added. Many more people were injured and taken to nearby hospitals. So far, no one has claimed responsibility for the attack, but over the past eight years, jihadist group Boko Haram has carried out hundreds of deadly attacks on mosques, schools, markets, and churches in northern Nigeria. Despite nearly 14 centuries of Muslim-on-Muslim -Muslim violence, Western politicians and reporters regularly assure us that Muslims who kill other Muslims aren't real Muslims because a real Muslim would never kill a fellow Muslim. Somehow, Islamic terrorist groups never seem to get that memo. This raises the obvious question, why have Muslims been killing their fellow Muslims for nearly 14 centuries? Let me give you four reasons. First, Muhammad ordered his followers to kill apostates, people who leave Islam. In Sahih al-Bukhari 6922, Muhammad declares, whoever changed his Islamic religion, kill him. Second, Muhammad promised his followers that they would be rewarded in paradise for killing apostates. In Sahih al-Bukhari 6930, he proclaims, During the last days there will appear some young foolish people who will say the best words, but their faith will not go beyond their throats, i.e. they will have no faith, and will go out from, i.e. leave their religion as an arrow goes out of the game. So wherever you find them, kill them, for whoever kills them shall have reward on the day of resurrection. So, if you want to get extra virgins in paradise, you can get your extra virgins by killing apostates. Not according to David Wood, according to Muhammad. Third, Muhammad and the Quran set the apostasy bar extremely low. In other words, Muhammad and Allah made it extremely easy to accuse someone of apostasy in Islam. In the hadith we just read, Muhammad refers to young foolish people who will say the best words, but their faith will not go beyond their throats, i.e. they will have no faith. We tend to think of apostasy as officially renouncing one's religion. But Muhammad commands his followers to kill people who are saying the right words, but whose faith doesn't go beyond their throats. These aren't people who renounce Islam. These are people who claim to be Muslims, but don't have any real faith. Muhammad orders his followers to kill them. How do we know whether a Muslim has real faith, according to the Quran? Surah 4, verse 65, But know by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad, judge in all disputes between them, and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions, and accept them with full submission. You have no real Islamic faith until you have no resistance against Muhammad's decisions, and you submit fully to those decisions. So a Muslim from Boko Haram or ISIS or the Taliban can point to other Muslims and say, you're not obeying Muhammad's command to do X, Y, or Z, therefore you're not a Muslim according to Surah 4, verse 65 of the Quran, and Muhammad says that I'll be rewarded in paradise for killing you, or a mosque full of people like you. Fourth, Muhammad's companions showed by example that the best Muslims are the ones who kill Muslims they disagree with. According to Muhammad, the first generation of Muslims was the best generation of Muslims. Sahih Muslim, 6470. The Messenger of Allah was asked, Which of the people are best? He said, My generation, then those who come after them, then those who come after them.
Why is it extremely problematic that Muhammad calls the first generation of Muslims the best generation of Muslims? It's problematic because the first generation of Muslims almost annihilated itself when Muslims started killing each other. They would kill each other over simple disagreements. For instance, Aisha, one of Muhammad's widows, a woman who's called the mother of the faithful in Islam, led an army against the forces of Ali, Muhammad's cousin and son-in-law, who was called the commander of the faithful and the fourth of the rightly guided caliphs. Their armies clashed at what's known as the Battle of the Camel, where somewhere around 10,000 Muslims died in bloody combat. They weren't killed by Christians. They weren't killed by Jews. They weren't killed by atheists. They weren't killed by pagans. They were killed by their fellow Muslims. That's how the first generation of Muslims handled their disagreements. They slaughtered each other. And Muhammad himself pointed to that generation and said, these are the best Muslims ever. Two takeaways. One, since Islam's most trusted sources provide a recipe for Muslim-on-Muslim -Muslim violence, the best way to protect Muslims from this violence is to show Muslims that Muhammad was a false prophet. So, learn some facts about Muhammad, expose him as the most obvious false prophet in history, and you'll be saving lives. Two, politicians and reporters and educators and actors call people bigots and racists and hate mongers and Islamophobes for trying to undermine the Islamic teachings that lead to endless Muslim on Muslim violence. By shielding violent Islamic teachings from criticism, Politicians, reporters, educators, and actors aren't protecting Muslims. They're killing Muslims. The largest anti-Muslim hate group in the world is Islam. The second largest anti-Muslim hate group in the world is the alliance of Western forces that condemn all open, honest discussion of Muhammad and his teachings. If you'd like to join me in protecting Muslims from the Islamic teachings that are getting them killed and from the alliance of Western politicians, reporters, educators, and actors that are protecting the ideology that's getting them killed, be sure to subscribe and to watch these videos, which will equip you to refute and expose not only history's most dangerous ideology, but also the heartless leaders and entertainers who defend and promote it. More to come.